is Ayla trending? Ooh. Oh, what? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no, we just realized. Oh, no. Is oh, this, is this a... Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> we all thought we were going to get some tea and it's like, I've caught tea. We're so detached from like the rest of the world. The thing is, okay, about Keem is that he was like in a what, 13 year old relationship. And then like he, he said he was single for one day and then he got in a relationship with this girl and they broke up like a week or two later and now he's still oh, like wow. he's like I want more girls he just wants to show off that like girls like him <laughs> but like Which- let's be honest here there's only one reason why people would yeah. any would anyone be, be into him right there's, yeah no 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 i don't literally i don't i can't even think of any other reason it's not like it ne- it's necessarily that like a, only like a gold digger or like a clout chaser would be dating him but it's just the fact that he has this much power it makes it an attractive trait but i feel like that's his only attractive trait well i also um, think it's like not a flex when people your age aren't attracted to you once literally. in your life like why are you proud of that that you can't get like a grown woman I, if you can't get anybody above 25 who has their prefrontal cortex completely developed and that's a you problem he shows up <laughs> i'm mentally 12 and it's like good great dude like is he a dad yeah. he, he is he dad. is he is to a daughter so uh, mm. imagine yeah. you have a daughter and then she's like i'm dating him now no you're not who the fuck you are not <laughs> <laughs> lady go back to your room guys should we watch this video yeah uh, me and the girlfriend have broken up i know sad 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 things happen you know not everything is forever but uh, the good news <laughs> is I am currently single and accepting <laughs> applications. <laughs> Me. He sounds and like he's girl- reading a script. The fact that he calls her the girlfriend. Glad you're so broken up about it. Guess I meant a lot. Low we- key looks like he's crying though. Low key. Look like he's a little <laughs> teary eyed. He's giving me the energy of like the kid in gym class that took it way too serious having to do a school presentation. <laughs> I just feel like Kim Star is the kind of dude that is stuck in the frat boy mentality and he just can't oh, get past 100%. that. I also wanted to uh, go over these other videos. So initially, last week, Kim Star came out with his apology regarding his comments to SA victims. Let's watch it together. I'm going to share my screen. During this vacation, I've taken some time to uh, meet up and have conversations with victims of sexual assault and, and all that types of stuff. Um, there's a disconnect for me uh, in in some of the scenarios. And that's why I was asking questions on Twitter a couple months ago about, um, is it possible to be like orally raped? Like, can't you get away? Like stuff like that, you know, I'm a fighter, right? So from my perspective, it's like, you fight, you fight, like you get away, you run. So flight, fight and freeze are actually natural unconscious automatic responses it's not something that you can control in the moment um it either happens or it doesn't right so what's just astronomically hilarious to me is that took me a three second google search on fight flight freeze response and i found it you're not asking questions you're being a dick like i'm gonna find the original video because i feel like it wasn't just asking a question i don't think he was like you fellas is it right no, no i don't think he was no, like no he was a like, dick he was like, an absolute dick and it's like I okay he said like challenge me when he's like there's a disconnect for me it's like okay there's plenty of people who are like allies i guess or people who haven't personally been through it who still have the brain capacity to understand that it's a real thing and people go through it. They didn't have to have all these conversations. His whole, like, I'm a fighter. Sometimes in that situation, freezing is your version of fighting because if you fight back, the dude might, like, kill you. Flight or um, fight, uh, you could be seriously injured if you try to fight or if you try to leave. It's like better to comply with the abuser, like in a situation like that for a lot of situations to like avoid further injury to yourself. So that's also what's absolutely bonkers to me, especially with the um, Justine and Jake Paul situation. 
he's a six foot something boxer and she's like a buck 15 soaking wet like what <laughs> okay well you know what's funny is that he also said i don't understand the physics of it you can't get away from a guy that's on top of you that's twice your size maybe you should talk to your daughter i hear that she's really good at math and science she oh. might be able to help you out with those physics my guy it's like yeah a lot of guys wouldn't be able to like see themselves in in a freezing state but have some empathy for some people who are like that and it's just it's, it's something that's like internal it's not something that you ne- necessarily need to be educated about right yeah. sometimes yeah. it just like literally does not because i've had so many people where i'll complain about like being on public transportation and people incessantly hitting on me and being really annoying and every time i tell a guy about it they'll be like well like what did you say back did you like stand up for yourself and it's like no i said nothing and they're like why you gotta like take control it's like because if you say something sometimes you don't know what the outcome will be like sometimes in those situations you're just i'd rather you have to ignore it even if you don't want to i mean kim is so little i would think he'd understand Um, (laughs) and i also there were so many comments on his video that were all these guys just talking about fight or flight and no one was saying freeze and so I feel like that one's a lot lesser known as well. Well, because you also have to take into account his like viewpoints on mental health. So anything mental, like the mental factor of like freezing Doesn't is, make sense. yeah, yeah okay. he, it goes right over his head because he's like, yeah. I'm a fighter. And it's like, yeah, sure you are. Sure, you're a fighter, but people freeze. You're not necessarily like physically freezing. Some Sometimes you might not be frozen, but in your head, you're weighing the pros and cons of the all the other options that you have. Because yes, you know what? And maybe in an alternate reality universe, maybe she did hit him or kick him in the balls. He would pat and she could just run away. Maybe that could have been an alternate reality. But what if he tried, she tried to kick him in the balls. He was still there and he strangled her to death. You know, that could have been an alternate reality situation. There's so many different ways that it could have went down. And even if she didn't necessarily freeze, which I'm pretty sure she did, um, it could have been just like, this was like her, this was like the best option out of all of them. Wasn't Jake like investigated by the FBI for having a bunch of fucking like AK-47s or whatever they're in his like house. So it's like, okay, so we know he's an insane person. And she already told him that she didn't want to do this and he didn't care. Also, I think that's on the original video if we want to watch that. Hey guys, uh, I need to do a drum alert today on the Jake Paul sexual allegations. And quite frankly, I do not believe the alleged like, victim. Mm. And I- <laughs> this is not the first time that he started a video saying, quite frankly, I don't believe the victim. <laughs> This, he said this exact same thing um, in response to like uh, Jake Paul's assistant accusing face banks. And this Did was actually... Also- actual drama alert by the way on his like main youtube channel which is funny because he also said that he's unbiased only supporting his feelings and <laughs> i gotta hear hasn't ben he here. also like uh spoken against jesse smiles like he doesn't believe that she got assaulted i think and he hasn't apologized to her still so the fact that he's like allegations allegations like the, the allegations yeah. exist but okay. I don't want to just cover this real quick on Traveler without getting some pushback. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe, maybe I'm not seeing a certain mm-hmm. angle to the story. That's why I'm making this Twitter video so I can be challenged before I put it on Traveler in front of millions of people. But this girl is claiming that Jake Paul, you know, was kissing her, holding her hand, led her to her room. She didn't want to do any further stuff with him. And then Jake Paul like grabbed her head and started her face and within 30 seconds busted a nut in her mouth how does that happen how that- <laughs> oh there's oh. A question. That's <laughs> questioning i get it like how he just explains the encounter like uh. right that it's so graphic and it's like that first first and foremost shows that he has no respect for the victim no and connection that- to the yeah, you don't use that language he's talking about it like it's gossip it's not like something serious it's just something that is happening right now it's current you know it's gonna pass away no one's gonna talk about it afterwards huh. like he doesn't gossip though <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of glad that we're re-watching this because this actually directly disputes what he says about i was just asking a question it's it's a rhetorical question what does that happen like let me show you like what do you want me to say like what are you <laughs> he's almost making fun of the situation it's also about like it. 
after he's already said, I don't believe her. Yeah. So we have his whole opinion. We have the whole story. And then he says, how does that happen? Wouldn't she have to open her mouth and like participate in some way for that to happen? Like, can't you just turn your head or can't you just get a, like, is, is there, is there, is there some way to force oral sex on someone? I mean, yes. Not saying yeah. that he had a weapon and was like, you better do this. You know, she he just very graphically explained how he grabbed her head and forced her. So like he just contradicted exactly what he said. And she also, would he even like, need a weapon? Like, yeah, he is a weapon. He is the weapon. Like he doesn't <laughs> need a weapon. It's his body yeah. that's the weapon. And actually, it's a misconception that um, weapons are used in a lot of like essay instances. I think it's only something like 11% of perpetrators used a gun, 6% a knife, and then like 1% other of like all essays that have been reported, right? So I just think it's really, it's just a a non-starter to be like, oh, he didn't have a weapon. So therefore he didn't force you to do anything. Weapons in the the boxing matches? Like, no, it's just the fists, bruh. Like, it's just the body. These guns, though. (laughs) (laughs) I don't understand the physics here. Like, I don't understand how that's possible. Like, why? Like, I would, can't you? Get away? Is there really no way to get away? Okay, is it? Does he just keep repeating this? Do you want to? Yeah, I think so. The way that this goes on for another like two and a half minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <In> a video. <laughs> uh, okay, so back to the rest of his apology. And I wanted to better understand this, and that's why I was asking questions. And uh, <laughs> that's so that's good. Good. <laughs> you know, the hate that comes from asking a question like that online. Immediately. I wonder why he got hate for that question <laughs> that he asked. <laughs> yeah. A lot of healthy conversations I should have been having, but even online, I don't think it would have been as effective as it has been um, recently having these in real life conversations with these victims. One thing I couldn't understand or grasp is the whole freeze aspect of it. Like, you know, assault was happening. I froze up. I literally couldn't move. Like, that is so foreign to me. But to hear that, over and over again, having these in real life conversations with sexual assault victims. And he keeps bringing up these in real life conversations with SA victims. There's no way that he's this bold in real life. If he were face to face with that victim in that situation with Jake Paul, would he have confronted it in the same way? Absolutely not. At least I would freaking hope not. I'm just trying to like figure out how, how do you round up a bunch of victims to come explain something to you? You like know, how many, he said, he's no. making it sound like so many people. Like, did you put up a sign and be like, hey, it was like a Jubilee video. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, no. He said he talked to Tana Mojo and Trisha Paytas, which is like, OK. Just yeah. Like, imagine how dumb you have to be for like 20 year old Tana Mojo to explain the physics of something to you. <laughs> yeah, Ray, you need another tutor. <laughs> Hit up Tana for some physics. Yeah. Like, as soon as you post that video, you had tons of people online being like, this is damaging. This is not right. This is wrong. Here's why this is wrong. What makes those victim stories oh, less yeah. reputable than the people you spoke to in person? You know, you can't pick and choose who's a victim of it all. Yeah, he was like, in this video, he's like, I originally started feeling defensive about it. And it's like, this story wasn't about you. It didn't have anything to do with you. Like, why are you being defensive? Jake wasn't being as defensive as you were. Like, I believe um, happens now, and I and, and I guess I do understand it. It's hard, you know, being a guy and like putting yourself in that shoes, and but to hear it and to see and like, you know, having this conversation. I've spoken with many guys before. I mean, on this. But it was just happened. so hard being a man. Hard. It's so hard being a man. I can't understand. <laughs> Think of it as a robbery. Okay? If someone's robbing you, you freeze, right? Like you gotta freeze a little bit at least. So it's like, okay, if it's not SA, think of something else. I, I wouldn't have been able to like authentically believe someone like I would in real life. You know, you see the emotions in, in their eyes and you hear these stories and I feel very foolish. I want to clip that though. That's like, I love that part. <laughs> we Look need away. a sound bite board. 
or something. So <laughs> yeah, can no. put that. Oh, so I feel very much. Oh, I wish I knew how to do that shit. That would have been funny. <laughs> if he's working on it, good. If he does want, you know, to be more honest with people, good. But I definitely am going to need more than this. I'm glad he did it. You know what? After like shitting on him for an entire hour. <laughs> yeah, I want to. <laughs> I, I think this is the first step in the right direction. I would have appreciated him naming the people, like the specific victims that he called out. Jesse Smiles, Justine Paradise. I hope that these conversations that he's had during the past week were maybe with the victims that he literally slandered their names and stories. I doubt it. Oh, for sure. I I don't think he's actually sorry. I think he's trying to acknowledge things to have less, um, I guess, against him. Uh, to use whether it's in a debate or online because I don't know this is the most relevant Daniel has been in like quite a long time and I think it probably kills him that it's because of like Ethan and Trisha Paytas and now that he's also kind of set his foot into like our zone I guess and tried to like have more of a dialogue if you will he's like oh yeah I better walk these comments back so this new audience will like be more receptive to me to be completely honest with you though um even if he doesn't like 100% have had hasn't had this like weird epiphany and now he's like this like social justice warrior I'm still glad that he made this video because one of the biggest like implications of him like speaking out against these victims is that his like little rug rat like 10 year old fans they, they were under the impression that like SA through oral could not be possible. They were under the impression that you couldn't freeze. So even if this isn't 100% genuine, I think it's still a step in the right direction. I I I agree with that. that. Yeah. It is a good step forward, but also if that's the case of his impressionable audience, Twitter is not his biggest platform. Also, I feel like we kind of bullied him into coming out with this apology. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm proud of that. I have no problem with that. Seeing these people go through that and hearing how me even asking questions has ended them um, makes me want out. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way it cuts off. It's giving me... Mm. <laughs> this to me seemed more like an acknowledgement, which is still a great thing in my opinion. Honestly, as sad as it is, like this might be the best we're going to get from the game. The people whose names he slandered and put out there deserve a public apology and all the victims that he basically invalidated their trauma in general yeah so oh. um in the show we <laughs> were kind of maybe potentially speaking about having a chat with Kim Shar. then randomly he comes out with this video and i think he sent this to us as well um called dear t channels dear t channels you have such a bad rap, all right, like, and then, and, and reputation. Uh, but I also have a bad reputation, and, uh, you know. And rightfully so, you have a bad reputation. Okay. Oh, my God. I have a huge fan base. You guys have a huge fan base, and uh, our fan bases disagree with each other on almost everything. And I think I'm... I realize that, like, there hasn't been real communication between my side and your side at all. And I feel like in the past when I've disagreed with somebody or disagreed with, like, a commentary person and got to know them and got to talk to them and bounce ideas back and forth, we could find common, you know, stuff that we agree with and stuff that we disagree with. And I don't know, open dialogue is good. And we do not communicate with each other. And um, I'm going to make myself available to... Uh, to to have conversations with you moving forward. So any T channel that would like to uh, communicate. Why is he flirting with us? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Same vibe. <laughs> like, why is there a lack of communication? Oh yeah, maybe it's because the first time you reached out to us, you called us stupid 15 times in a row. <laughs> like, that's not how adults why communicate. Is that not- one second he's literally calling us like dumb motherfuckers in that yeah room. i want to talk to you guys let's have a conversation yeah let's talk it out let's be chill guys we're all just people also i just want to reiterate before this video was posted he mentioned in directly to us on our twitter 
that he wanted to have a discussion. So like, and then made this video and sent us the video as if we hadn't yeah. already said like, yeah, cool, we can have a discussion. It's like, he's making it out like we're begging for him to like be available. Like, yeah. oh, it's so hard to reach you when in reality, he's the one who found our Twitter when we had like 200 followers. My yeah. question yeah. is like, why does he think he's in this like weird, game of thrones youtube version where there's like sides it's like you know a person can be like a fan of both of us and watch our content like independent yeah. of each other the only like, divide is in his head yeah like, why why is it that he can be a drama alert channel but he's like in the commentary and we're like in tea like we're covering the same topics every single week like he addressed the difference scroll down, scroll down someone was like you're a t channel though my channel was five years old before that term was even created no so? it's still no. though <laughs> yeah, playing. it's a term Good. playing just like, drama channel what does he think there's a divide between t and drama channels drama is so masculine <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i feel like they, they try to say that commentary is like the the boys you know where the smart people using facts go and then yeah. Drama and tea is just the girls who like to gossip and don't have anything else to back up their claims with. He yeah. calls himself news. He's a news, news. channel. He oh. started a video saying, I don't believe the victim. Is, yeah. that, is that news? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he, he made this tweet, like this response to Ethan being like, oh, yeah, you know what? I wasn't reporting you to YouTube, but now I'm going to start doing it since you're like saying this. And I was like, dude, this isn't the dunk you thought it was. And he's like, you need to realize that your feelings aren't facts. And I'm like, where was the feeling? Where's the fact? What's happening? <laughs> Love his like the initial first screen grab of all his videos where he's just like, like, like that. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> That's his favorite angle. So do you guys think he actually came only like messaged us? Like, I can't like I, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. There's so many bigger things out there. Yo, we yeah, got but, a like, mad crush she's been out on there you, for a fam. while. <laughs> He got no, a crush on you, he broke up with his girlfriend and everything. Oh. oh. <laughs> <An application. laughs> You're a bit older than her though, so I don't know if you have luck dating him. <laughs> My prefrontal cortex is almost oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so what's this tea with Trisha Paytas and Donna Klein? They have been like going at it online. It all started with the text. This is like the last video that we have on the channel. So for everyone watching, go check that out if you want like the full detail tea. But um, for everybody else on the call, um, so it all started with Trisha screaming at Donna on Twitter for some text message that she had sent Moses. The text message said something along the lines of, uh, if Ela has a miscarriage, I'm putting it on you and Trisha Paytas because you guys are causing so much stress to her. Trisha says this is the most vile and horrific thing that you can tell somebody. She didn't say what was said to her. She just said that's the most vile, disgusting, whatever thing. And I wonder if by saying these very passionate responses, maybe she thinks that nobody's going to actually look up what was said and just take her side because she's so hurt by it. Figured it out, like just through speculation of what Trisha was already doing it. Yeah, so I feel like everyone was thinking that. And that's well, why he said that in the podcast. He was like, "My mom kind of just said what everyone was thinking," and it's like, yeah, yeah because this is her grandbaby that Ela is carrying. Like, grandmas get defensive, and she wasn't scared to send that. And I'm not saying that I would have sent said that to someone, but like, can't really blame her either. You know, I would have been so much meaner if I'm just being right? honest. And like, listen, maybe I'm a bitch, <laughs> and like. God help me, but I would have said something so yeah. much meaner personally. Daughter in law as nice as Ela, like I would go ham. Like, are you kidding? Also, they, they talked about how hard it was to get, like, even conceive this child. So it's yeah. like, we paid so much for this baby. Shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to speak much on Trisha being pregnant because I know it's been a huge struggle for her. But imagine, I just, can only imagine if Trisha worked so hard to get pregnant and successfully was pregnant, any little inconvenience, she would be like, 
I would be like, stop, I don't need the stress. Because it's true, like, Hila doesn't deserve it either. She was gonna tease this until the baby was born, so she would, like, if Donna didn't actually, like, release the text, she would be like, I'm gonna wait. And then the second the baby is born, she's gonna be like, look at what this B word, like, it's like, yeah. okay, man. She, I'm she, glad. she show it. Why didn't she show it originally? She's no stranger to leaking private texts or DMs. Like, she could have done it. Yeah, but blames other people for doing it to her. It's- so I'm glad that Donna actually, like, straight up read the text, owned it. I, I respect that. Shout out to your family, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, Donna, please stand up. I don't get what they're mad about anymore. Like, it's been three months. The podcast has moved on. Trisha has moved on. Like, why do they have to keep instigating? And I feel like the what makes sense is to just confront what's upsetting you. So Donna just being like, okay, let's talk about it. Like, this is what I said. This is why. Can we just, like, stop this back and forth? It's so ridiculous. Yeah, so that's, that's Trisha's whole thing now. She says... Uh, Ethan and his mother now are continuously harassing her, doxing her, and punching down because at this point she has absolutely nothing. Can we talk about after the her, whole fallout? Her new favorite term of calling people that are a part of a fan base being in a cold. I, I girl, girl, this is gonna get me heated up. <laughs> <laughs> What is a cult? What do you think a cult is, dude? It's not just a group of friends who don't like you. It's like it's just like teenagers in the street. She's like, oh my god, I just witnessed a cult. <laughs> <laughs> He's comparing H three to the blog spot now, basically being like, I dealt with a cult once. I can do it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Going through them cults, just hitting all of them. <laughs> yeah, girlfriend. Like, I think that's a you problem at this Literally. point. Um, yeah, why can't you just keep the call? You know what I mean? Like, no, you know what I heard is that um, they actually, Ela and Moses unfollowed each other recently on like Twitter and stuff. Just think about like how horrible it is for your brother to not defend you or be like, dude, just shut up. Like, Trisha. Sh-. Literally, like in the Kim Star and Trisha podcast, like, I, I don't understand how Moses didn't say anything or like Trisha didn't try to stop Kim Star of talking about the horses pictures because it was. Yeah. about Hila it wasn't like it wasn't also, about whenever we talk about this I always have to think back to like he might be in an abusive relationship so yeah. maybe that's why he can't be like shut the hell up but then I don't know it's just it's just like imagine how Hila is feeling like oh my god I'd be so pissed I would be like that's not my brother anymore like get the hell out of here it's oh, yeah sad. it's sad because like you said it's I can kind of sympathize for Moses because like of personal experiences and like the hold that an abuser can have on someone. And it's not just physical abuse, even though Trish has been exposed for that. It's also the emotional aspect of it. And there's, there's no telling what Trisha has on Moses. And also like they have a house together now. That's another factor. He, like there's more and more things building up to where he could feel trapped to where even his family isn't enough to pull him out of it. And that's that definitely happens to people all the time. I don't know, because him and Ela seemed to be close, like a close family right. up until this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's heartbreaking. I just pulled up Moses's Twitter, and in the past couple hours, he's been talking about that. He said that he didn't unfollow anybody. They blocked him, and it, he doesn't know why. Somebody's talking about Trisha alienating, and he says... You'll never know my full experience with them in the last year. So I don't know if they're actually doing something or if Trisha's convincing him that they're doing something. You know, Trisha was always like, you guys don't really know him. Like, we know each other. You know, that's what, um, what's that guy who got arrested for beating his wife? That guy would also talk to his wife like that. That guy who beat his pregnant wife. (gasps) Yeah, that guy. He would always be like, yeah, they don't understand us, baby. Like, it's just you and me. I understand you. Like, we're growing together. And it's like, Trisha is doing that. She's like gatekeeping Moses, basically. Yeah, which is like isolation. Isolating it from people that love you. So they won't be like, dude, she's being a crackhead right now. I'm genuinely curious who's going to be going to this wedding. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Trisha will definitely have it like on a stream or something. So we might have a peek in it. 
Maybe that's why they plan to have like three weddings. Then that's gonna divide like the four people they know into three different weddings. Yeah. Like, I feel like <laughs> if you don't have that many friends, two fewer weddings, maybe not three. That's so like, fun. It's just gonna be an empty wedding. Yeah. Like, four people each time. She she throws the bouquet of flowers for whoever's gonna get married next and it just lands on the ground. <laughs> <There's> so- <laughs> <laughs> is she gonna be able to afford her weddings because like i was gonna say the content no right more frenemies no more frenemies <laughs> money rolling oh, in, so. maybe that's why she's jumping to every single podcast to get like a quick commission check and because porn is no longer uh like allowed so she started doing feet oh really yeah dude her twitter is fucking gross i don't <laughs> <laughs> Someone sent us her private Instagram, uh, and I just saw a couple of the photos before we came on here. Oh, so my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I, thought it was a baby foot. I thought it was a baby foot. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wow. such a, like, it's like a weird foot. Like, it's, like, normal, <laughs> but it's, you know what I mean? I, I mean... It just looked like a baby foot. I guess it was the angle or something. But I was like, oh. scared at it for a minute. Like, I was like, oh, I have to pull up the receipts, girls. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that time I spent looking at that picture. Dude, I opened it in public and I'm like, whose feet? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a child. Like, oh. oh my God. It, like, there's something oh. weird about it. It's so cute! <laughs> Trisha's gonna come for the content. She's gonna copyright this She's video. Gonna She's gonna be like, "Why are you showing my feet on this uh, in this video?" It's, it's a baby. It's not yeah, yet. what are you talking about? It's my baby's foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually curious though. What's the beauty standard for feet? Like chubby feet or cute or like skinny? Because all feet are so ugly to me. Like <laughs> right, exactly. I was like. I literally was so poor at one point. I was like, I will start doing this. But then okay. I was like, I don't know if they're going to be like, you have the grossest feet in the world. And I feel like I can't live with that because it is literally the grossest pot- part of your body. And if it's also disgusting to people who love that part of the body, then I got to clock out. I can't. Yeah. Do <laughs> I, I don't know if it's like the world, like pedicure pretty or like smelly oh. gross. Well, this girl on TikTok, she's like, they send me specific shoes and they're like, wear it for a week and then send it back to us. And it's like, oh my gosh, what wow. a dream job though. Just like a bunch of new shoes. <laughs> I found an article. So I guess it depends, but it seems like a lot has to do with the shape, <laughs> the softness, uh, the size of the nail beds and toe length to foot ratio. <laughs> I like Greek type feet. <laughs> oh, Greek type is the, when the second toe is a little longer than the big toe. Okay. Oh my god, mine's like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody DMs if you're watching. <laughs> only fans, only feet. That's but- what I was about to ask is back to the only fans thing now that they're banning like porn or sex-based content is like, do y'all think people are going to find their way to work around it and stay on OnlyFans? Or do you think another platform will take over kind of like TikTok did with Vine? There are a couple of smaller alternatives, nothing as big. And also I think um, OnlyFans is only um, banning like hardcore stuff, right? It's just, por- it's porn, like penetration. Okay. So you're still <laughs> you doing stuff for that stuff. penetration dog. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> penetration. <laughs> <laughs> honestly a lot of especially like the influencers that do it like they can still post like their yeah like, like Corinna Kopp is gonna be fine yeah 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 yeah, yeah. she's yeah. still making I mean Trisha is definitely gonna be affected because she was doing like Alfredo sauce you know <laughs> oh but, I wouldn't describe it like that but okay <laughs> I bet they were like I'm sick of the penetration maybe if we take it away we can get some feet <laughs> You needed the feet content. Trisha posts a baby foot. They're like, it worked. <laughs> millions, making millions. <laughs> Guys, I feel like I need to go buy this domain right now, onlyfeet.com. I feel like that's part of the thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh it's taken. I thought you just discovered it. So, um, guys, I think I'm going to end the video here. Um, everybody watching, sorry, I got weird by the end of it. But thank you. Not so sorry. Much. It's a fun discussion, you know. <laughs> You're welcome for the tips. So. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize, but I'm not sorry. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. We're going to be posting new videos every single day. And also let us know if you like this format. This is especially going to be longer. So let me know if you like longer videos. So 
Comment that down below. Okay.